Howdy folks. I've had a few people email and comment um, wanting some help on how to program their radio once it's already mounted in the truck. Um, some folks said they didn't have a laptop or whatever, so we're taking a look at how to do that using a Raspberry Pi and VNC. So let's check it out today on K5ATA Ham Radio. Alright, so as we get started, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified about our new content. Um, Raspberry Pis and stuff are located in our Amazon store. There's a, an affiliate link down before. We do make a small percentage out of that, but it doesn't end up costing you anything extra, as well as our Patreon link. Um, if you feel so inclined to help support our middle school ham radio club, we would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to VNC into a Raspberry Pi that's running Chirp to program the radio. Now, the radio in the truck is the ICOM 5100, and I'm not going to program it using Chirp. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually just kind of simulate like we're programming a radio that's in the truck. Um, any radio that you have that supports Chirp, or Chirp supports the radio rather, this should work just the same way. You'll just you know go through whatever specific steps for yours, but the idea is generally the same. So, okay, so what you're going to want to do is open your VNC viewer. In this case, I'm using VNC Connect by Real VNC, and go ahead and log into the Pi. So over here, double click. Okay, and go ahead and log into your Pi. And it brings it up. And this is what your screen looks like if you set it up using the KM4ACK script. Um, I'll link that video up there, up, up above, and I'll also put a link down below for where we set this up. Um, click the little raspberry, come down to ham radio, because it's got ham radio tools in there, and then click chart. Okay, it's going to bring that up. Now, you want to make sure your Baofeng or whatever radio it is is plugged in. In this case, like I said, we're simulating like we're in the truck, but I'm doing it in here because... Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's hot outside, and two, I can accomplish the same thing doing this. So, um, but just remember, what we're doing is we're actually VNCing through the network from a Windows box into the Raspberry Pi. So you could do this if the Raspberry Pi is plugged in out in the truck or whatever, you know, running off of a power inverter. My truck actually has the little 110 plugs in there, and that works too. So you're gonna hit radio and then download from radio. And the last radio I messed with in here was that, so it's already pulled up. And you're going to hit OK. It's going to give you little warnings, you know, make sure your radio is off, connect it into the right spot, make sure it's in there all the way, yada, yada, yada. And you're going to hit it, and you'll see it says it's cloning, and you've got the little flashing red light there right beneath the VFO MR button. All right, and it pulled those up. So this is what's in the radio. So now I can edit anything that's in there. So if I want to, I can create a spot here and you know put it at whatever frequency it is that floats your boat, 146.52. I already have that somewhere else, but it's okay. Now if I want to change the name of it, I can tell it this is simplex. Um, if you did put it as a repeater, you would just set your offset over here, just like normal, and your tone and stuff over here. So, no big deal. Um, go ahead and hit that, and then you're going to save it. I always save it before I write it, just because nothing sucks worse than something locking up and you losing hours of stuff. All right, then you hit radio. And you're going to upload this to the radio. It's already got the settings in there, so once again, easy peasy. Gives you the same stupid warning. I'm just going to turn off the stupid warning. And you hit it, and it's cloning. So, and what you'll see is when it's done, I should have that channel 33, which is, or 34, which is at 146.52. I should have that in there. Um, again, like I said, this should work with pretty much anything you have. 
that's supported by Chirp. I mean, you can do it. Well, I guess in any radio you have that you have a a version of it that will run under or on your Raspberry Pi, you can do it that way too. So as long as you can get to the Raspberry Pi and your software will run on the Pi, you can do it that way. That way, it saves you from having to you know take the radio out of the vehicle, bring it inside and whatnot. Now there are some radios that have you know SD cards and stuff like that to program with, and we'll take a look at one of those next time. But that's pretty much all there is to this. Okay, so if you don't have the KM4 ACK distribution on or on your Raspberry Pi to have Chirp downloaded, um, you can go to the Chirp website and let me see if I can't throw that up there for you here. All right, so you can always go to the Chirp website. Um, and it's actually just chirp.damplanet.com and then sus project slash chirp yada yada yada. Um, it tells you what radios are supported in here. So if there's any question out front, you can see it supports a, a, the official term is a buttload for Baofeng and whatnot. Um, let's see. You can see there's quite, quite the long line of radios it supports. Uh, the radio in the truck is the 5100. And it's not supported here, so that's why I'm not programming it with it. I'm gonna, that's the radio I'm going to use to show you another way to program those. But most of your radios, or a lot of your radios, are supported using Chirp. So go check that out. Um, in order to get Chirp, if you need it, and you're running it on your Raspberry Pi, and you didn't get the km 4 ack script, which I'm not sure why you didn't. might want to think about that. It tells you how to get it. So obviously here's the Windows version. Is the Mac version, and you're just going to use the Ubuntu version here. And these are just the commands. You just, I'm not going to actually run them because I already have it, but you can just copy that. And then if you're in, well, let me do it from here. That way I can actually show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is on the Raspberry Pi now, so this is through the VNC connection. What you do is you just go down here to the Linux part of the world. And what you're going to do is you're just going to copy this. Okay, and then open a terminal window, and that's that little dude right there for the you don't know. And you're going to paste it. And then you would actually hit enter and let it go. Um, then it takes you through a couple, couple other steps to get that running. So that is pretty much that. That's how to program it on there. So let's take a look and see if it actually worked. Okay, so I think the radio restarted already when I, but I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on. Here it comes. Let's see. I need to into memory mode there by hitting the orange button not that you can really see it and then hit the wonderful little let's see it's on channel 15 you said it was 34 and 34 and you can see well maybe you can't see maybe you can now there you go now you can kind of see it that it actually has Channel 34, which is that simplex channel that we programmed in there. So that's all there is to it. Like I said, it works like a champ, assuming that your software will run on Linux. Um, and it, it's an easy way to, you know, program your radio without having to take everything out of the vehicle, bring it inside, or take a laptop out there, or if you don't have a laptop or whatever. That's that. Y'all, thanks for watching. We hope to see you on the air. 7-3.